Sir. You mentioned it in your uh, introductory letter, and, and there was another commentary about how Puccini uh, didn't uh, finish the opera yeah. and so forth. And I thought in the first two acts, it was sort of on the edge of my seat, and in the third, uh, it fell, I thought it fell a little bit uh, mm -hmm. short. And I wondered if there's speculation on how Puccini might have finished the opera yeah. and how it affected uh, you, whether you felt that uh, Laurie, for example, that, uh, the tension changed a little bit. Oh, it always well, does. Yeah. Well, let me repeat the question that I had over Laurie. Uh, 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 the gentleman is saying that um, reading the program and knowing that Puccini died before he finished this, that the Acts 1 and Acts 2 have a lot of dramatic tension in them, and then Acts 3, uh, he felt started to falter a little bit. And is that correct in terms of paraphrasing what the gentleman said? Um, and, uh, you know, is there any indication as to what Puccini might have done had he lived to complete the opera? And that's really one of the great questions. And, opera history is what would Puccini have done at the end of this opera? He died right after the death of Liu. So when, when Liu commits suicide there, then there's a very mournful chorus. I always get very teary at that chorus, not only because it's so beautiful, but it's also it's like the last expressive gesture on Puccini's part, this very beloved composer. Um, so it's kind of a double whammy there for a lot of opera lovers. But um, Alfano completed the opera with some sketches that Puccini made and um, uh, no one quite knows what Puccini might have done. Any, any, any thoughts on that, Larry? And from the performer standpoint, you know? Well, yes, I mean, of course the opera really does end after Liu's death, doesn't it? <laughs> Is that where you felt that it's sort of... Yeah. Oh, of course not the premier Toscanini put up down his baton and would not go on in. Um, so... I mean, the thing is that uh, we have to go on anyway and, and wrap the thing up. This is the only ending I've ever done. There are a couple of alternative endings that, that are done uh, occasionally, and mostly in concert. Um, this is the only one I've ever done. And I mean, I would try to carry it best I can. Yeah, it kind of is a big, fat, <laughs> big, fat duet ending of let's prove our love for each other. The ice princess has melted. It kind of all gets wrapped up so quickly that it is a little bit jarring, sort of, ew, you know, like. Uh, but, you know, we try to work the book, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, I feel it every time, of course. I, I, I feel it every time. I'm just kind of like. Um, I've ne I never sang the role of Liu, but I, I kind of always wished I had, you know, to see what that would feel like. <laughs> I only ever did during that, so, um, yeah, it's an interesting, it is an interesting feeling uh, as during that to be left there. You kind of feel a little bit, you know, that proverbial egg on the face uh, after the, you know, the other sopranos kill herself for your benefit. It's a little bit like, you know, it's, it's very hard to win back the audience. <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> were you, uh, as an actress, were you foreshadowing the, the tremendous transformation from about maybe five, six minutes in? Did you, did you think so? Seconds? The gentleman was asking if I was foreshadowing in Act 2 or at the top of Act 3, what was going to change? You were foreshadowing from Act 1. Yes, that? right. Um, yeah, yes. He was asking if I was starting to foreshadow as an actress uh, you know, what the ending was going to be. And yes, this is been something that I've always worked on, and, and we worked in, on it in this production, definitely. Really, starting out the piece, when I entered for the place that I entered, even, uh, with a feeling of, I hope this, I hope this prince will save me from my torment, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That I want to find love, that I want to be, that I want to be normal, <laughs> and find love. Uh, I was, so, yes. It's difficult with about two minutes to make it complete. Yeah, Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for noticing that. <laughs> <laughs> the foreshadowing is, is more or less written into it, isn't it? Because at the end she said, I saw you and I... That's true. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. uh, the gentleman's... Did, you, did everybody hear that? Yeah. Uh, in the third act, Tony Dot does say, the first moment I saw you... Oh, you you're sorry, the super titles, probably. The first moment I saw you, I knew that you were the one. So it is written in. Um, sometimes it's difficult to to make that read in the moment, especially if you're doing a huge, like maybe a uh, production which we're not stuck in the back of the stage yeah, yeah. singing, usually, which is usually the occasion when, when I did it at New York City Opera, and, you know, if you do it at the Met and Zeffirelli, touring that's way at the back of the stage in these elaborate costumes, and so it doesn't come across at all as real, uh, that she's real in Act Two. Um, 
So I mean, productions like this are fantastic, where we can make it more human from the start. Mm -hmm. Can I answer that? Yes. Yeah, can I answer that? Not, not to put Laurie on the spot, but, <laughs> but no, I, I've, uh, I've seen so many productions of this opera, really since I was a kid. Um, and I've worked as assistant director on, on many, many revivals of it, so I've been around this opera a lot. And the fact that you even picked up on this artist's transformation early and that, that, that she was able to convey that is it's so unusual in this opera because very few sopranos can actually sing the role, period, to sing, because it's such an animal vocally. But then uh, very few sopranos actually manage to get a degree of vulnerability and, 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 and complexity in the character, which I think, I think uh, Laurie uh, has done such, such a beautiful job of conveying that. And to pick up also on this production, the fact that the production on one level is so simple, and so far downstage, you know, and the fact that the design is this you know, megaphone-like structure that really thrusts all the sound and energy right at the audience. My feeling was that it helps to underline some of those uh, other aspects of the story. Uh, because most productions, the Port Torinda is so... Separated. So separated, yes, from, from, uh, from everyone on stage and from the audience. And she's wearing such elaborate costumes with, you know, beaded headdresses and long flowing gowns, and you can't even find the human being in there. Um, and so uh, that's part of what I felt this this production, again, while, while it's really not a very traditional production, it's part of what I felt this production um, managed to convey uh, in, in both the work that Christopher Alden did, the director, and, and, and in working with Laurie. Questions? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very good question. You know, um, uh, a little tongue in cheek. Do ping ping upon ever get back to those vacation homes they describe that they long for there in Act Two? Well. Now that the age of bloodshed is over, now that we finally found love, you know, maybe they're free to go to at least get a one-week vacation back at their house in Hunan on the lake, you know. I, I sure hope so. Those guys look awfully overworked and stressed at this production. Um, good question. Uh, yeah. Because of the use of the side lighting, uh, your positioning had to be exact yeah. in many different locations. Plus, you had your box on the floor, but then you also have other actors that you're playing against. Did you find any difficulty in trying to find your key light yeah. in exactly the right position? How much time yeah. was spent on that so that you could be seen? Because side lighting is yeah. very tricky. It can be yeah. very powerful. It can be tricky. Yeah, let, me, let, let, let me repeat the question, and then I'll hand it over to Laurie. Uh, very observant question here by this gentleman saying that there was so much side light. Um, side light is, you know, these booms you see here that are shooting shafts of light across the stage. And it's usually a fairly narrow beam of light, and so the, the singer has to be just so in the right place. And you'll notice when they were sitting in the chairs, there were these down masks that were very sharply defined on the stage. So the question is, how difficult is, is that when you're singing an opera and you're worrying about text and making sure you're communicating with the conductor and telling the story and acting and singing, um, uh, how difficult is it to, to be conscious of that too, that you have to be in the exact right place? 